Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Thank the Lord for his mercies. They are fresh and new every day. And we have come to take advantage of them tonight. <laughs> Amen. We have come to take advantage of the Lord's goodness and to worship him, to spend some time in his presence. He's so good to us. We're so blessed that we can call on him, lean on him, trust in him. Amen. He says to cast all your cares on him. That's comforting. Amen. That's good to know. Because there's a lot of things in this world that I can't change, I can't fix. Amen. But I'd like to. <laughs> Amen. But I do know somebody who can. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're surrounded by people who need the Lord. So we are in a very, very special place. Praise the Lord. And we just want to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Amen. Enter into his course with praise. And uh, worship him tonight and just spend some time in his presence. And let this whole world out here just kind of stay out there for a little while. Amen. And, uh, and if they want to come in here, that's fine. But uh, we're going to leave them out there for now. And uh, we're just going to enter into the presence of the Lord. And please pray for my daughter. Uh, talk to her a little bit tonight. And uh, she's having a really hard time talking still. Uh, but she was able to communicate a little bit. So uh, pray for her. Pray for those that are working with her, that God will bless them and give them wisdom and insight to help her and hedge of protection about her there. That God will have his way in that in that situation and that need. Remember Sister Joanne, Sister Jenny. Remember Sister Gwen and Sister Jenny and uh, Weatherly and their family. God bless them and uh, keep them. Brother Jimmy miss him. Love to see him come out. He needs to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, pray for God's blessings there. Sister Sandra, she's in the hospital. Uh, is she out now? She's home now? Okay. Yeah, she's uh, she's been having a lot of troubles with her heart. So uh, pray for her. Uh, God will help her, strengthen her, direct her, and uh, give her wisdom. Amen. Uh, continue to uh, pray for those that I work with. That God will help me to be a light and a witness there. Uh, love to reach them and, uh, and then there's some special unspokens that I want to see the Lord meet. Sister Ann is still struggling with the wasps and her health, not being able to breathe, so let's hold her up in prayer tonight. And I'm sure you've got some needs, so we want to give you a chance to take your request to the Lord. Amen. Oh, Y'all going to jump at once. Here. Brother Tony. My son said, Father-in-law uh, had back surgery and um, it seemed like his back's got 10 times worse since he had the surgery. And it, uh, it just sounds like he's uh, almost paralyzed. I talked to him today and he was just really discouraged. Wow. And uh, I told him I go, we'll pray for you tonight. Amen. I need Dr. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. I know that he's able. Amen. Amen. So we're going to we're gonna talk to him about that. That's good. Amen. Somebody else? Praise God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, pray for my mom. Uh, I talked to her a little bit today, and she was kind of like, well, um, she didn't want to talk very much. And I understand what she's going through because the doctor said mentally, mentally. Yeah. Um, she's got a lot of weighing on her, worrying about it, getting to the next day. And I just, you know, I'm just waiting on God. So many that are troubled. So many that are troubled. They need the Lord. Amen. My wife. Uh, we love prayer for my dad. Uh, yesterday we found out his kidneys are getting worse. They're at 25%. Uh, and his heart's still not working like it should be. There's a lot going on right now. Just prayers for strength and God's direction. My mom needs to touch of your heart. <coughs>
that gave a ride to the day and over baby and Mr. Neil her car had broke down and she was trying to get to the local mechanic shop um, but um, she has COPD and I guess a real bad diabetic that um, put her in contact with a, a mobile mechanic um, and uh, pretty much I will just Yes, amen. Was Ben? George had his. He had a heart surgery, so can't lift anything heavy. Right. Can't do any workouts. Has to stand out at gyms. Amen. All right, we can do that. Glory. Anyone else? Special unspoken request. Just raise a hand. The Lord knows. All right, let's stand to our feet and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. If you need prayer, feel free to come forward. We'll be glad to anoint you and pray for you. Lord, we are privileged to be able to call upon your name tonight. We thank you for this time in your presence and for your wonderful, wonderful spirit, God. The presence of the Lord is here. And Lord, we ask you to have mercy on these needs, these requests. Lord, that you'll put a hedge of protection about these. Lord, that you'll minister in their lives. Some of them need miracles. Some of them need a blessing. Some of them need help and guidance. And Lord, you are all of that and more, Jesus. And so we're believing you, Lord, to do a wonderful work. And God, I pray that you'll use each one of us as we pray for them, Lord. Somehow let us stand in the gap. Somehow let us be in the hedge to help make up the difference so that, Lord, their lives can be changed, so that their hearts can be changed, so that they can be ready to meet you, God. For our family members, loved ones, the special and spoken requests tonight, God, you know we each need. And God, we're believing you for touching and moving in a wonderful way. Pray for Brother Gary Richards. We miss him tonight. Pray that his hip is healing, doing well. We pray for a speedy recovery. And thank you, God, for your intervention in our lives. And we thank you for all of this. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Said, well, we can pray about it. Jesus will give us the money. And, uh, and 
She says, well, I think, I think that he's probably got bigger things than that on his plate than worrying about whether we have ice cream or not. But, uh, and then he says, uh, well, I prayed and, and he told me that, that we're going to have the money. And she says, well, and, and not only that, but he's going to bless the, the people that are, you know, without, that are struggling, that are in need. And uh, so she says, okay. He says, well, the money comes in. I guess we can go get some ice cream. And when they got home and checked the mail, there was a check in there for $100 from a student loan that had been paid off seven years prior. And uh, that check had just come in random out of nowhere. And uh, so they went out and got ice cream and they gave an offering to help in the missions. And, and, uh, and so God cares. He cares. Amen. And the Bible says that except we have the faith of a child, we need that childlike faith. And even though sometimes we think that our need is too small or there's people with bigger problems and all this, he's there. He's in it. He's on it. He loves it. Amen. And uh, who can tell when he's going to do something miraculous and wonderful? And so don't uh, don't ever discount. I mean, he wants us to enjoy life. He wants us to enjoy serving him. And that's awesome. Amen. We have some announcements. We're praying for Kay and Lisa Adams. Hold them up in your prayers. Amen. So thankful they've started coming. That is so awesome. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. Brother Randy Hart celebrated his birthday. Sister Connie celebrated hers. Yay! You don't look so thrilled. <laughs> hey, every birthday's a good birthday. Hey, Amen. Sister Jenny Weatherly celebrated hers. And the Richards celebrate 22, or yeah, celebrate uh, on the 22nd. They celebrate, uh, goodness, it's like 48 years, I think. I was like, yeah. 46, 48, I can't remember now. He told me, oh, that's awesome. Amen. It's incredible. Uh, also, we've got our compass prayer. Keep praying for the churches as God blesses those north, south, east, and west. And then we have uh, Ladies Life, Tuesday, Thursdays at 9 a.m., Sister Joanne's. And, uh, and then I believe we have a Thanksgiving dinner, November 13th, Sunday after service. Fellowship Hall sign up will be posted. Church has that out in the hall there. So uh, anything that you want to be a part of there, however you want to help out, will be great. Church will provide the means, and uh, and it's going to be good. Amen. It's going to be very good. Let's pray for uh, uh, Tammy Palm and her family. They're going to be using the Fellowship Hall this 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 month. Is it next month? After Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, they're going to be using it. For a uh, memorial service for Diava, their daughter, she had a lot of needs, and she passed away last year, and it's really hard for her. Um, she doesn't, uh, she didn't really want to do it, but, but, uh, and doesn't really know what to do, but they want to do something in memory of her, and so the family wants to get together and have something to eat, and just, uh, I told her, I said, well, just celebrate by getting the family together, you know, and, and if you want to talk about it her and that's awesome and you know but it's being done in memory of her and so uh, but pray for them because I believe that God's calling prodigals and uh, they need the Lord they need the Lord they really do and uh, God's the answer praise the Lord he really is uh, anything else we need to mention praise the Lord and let's worship the Lord help us sing tonight as we worship him together
someone today who they're probably their really I don't know for a fact but probably their religious beliefs include many gods and probably they haven't answered a single prayer think about that you imagine serving multiple deities and trying to please them and they've never answered a prayer that Mind-boggling? And you have nations in this world that are in that predicament. One of our missionaries was over in Russia, I believe it was, and they were going through something over there, and and uh, one of the guides was, was there, and they mentioned something about God. And, <coughs> and they mentioned to him that, that our God answers prayer. And the guide said, you must be a very happy people. Amen. Because your God hears and answers prayer. Because everybody else in the world that serves anybody but Jesus, their gods don't answer prayers. Because they are not gods. They're not real. Think about that. A large portion of our world today does not know Jesus. And yet they serve gods they dedicate their lives, their children, their businesses, their families, their world to gods that don't exist. That have never answered a prayer. Amen. And so we are so privileged tonight. So blessed. And so we, we want to be where God wants us to be. And David made this statement. And, uh, and I believe it's one that we should keep in our hearts that we are not forsaken of the Lord. I don't want to be forsaken by him. And as we're going to find tonight, the only way for that to happen is for you to forsake him. <laughs> Amen. If you turn your back on him and you run from him, then you can get in a place where you are forsaken. The Bible talks about blaspheming the Holy Ghost and getting into a place of never forgiveness. It is possible, but it seems that you've got to work really hard at it. Amen. And so we don't want to be forsaken. We want the blessings of the Lord. And uh, Psalms chapter 9, we're going to open up with that. Chapter 9 and verse 10. David talks to us a little bit. Psalms 9 and verse 10. David writes, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Throughout this, there's going to be a theme of, of seeking God, 
getting close to God. If we're reaching for him, he's reaching for us. He says, draw nigh unto him or get close to him. He's going to get close to us. Listen, we serve <laughs> the only God, obviously. But of all the gods that have been created that don't exist, he's the best God. And uh, he's incre incredible. He loves us. He cares about us. He is uh, so compassionate towards us. And David knew, amen, that those that know him will put their trust in him and that he will not forsake them. We are privileged tonight to know the only true and wise God, Jesus Christ, and to know that he loves us and that we can serve him. He will not forsake us. What a, what a terrible thing. And, and one of the reasons that I'm teaching on this tonight is because one of the first things the enemy is going to come in and try to do to you is tell you that God's done. He's not going to talk to you. God don't love you no more. You, you messed up too bad, or you're this, or you're that, or you're past, or you're whatever. Don't listen to that liar. Amen. Amen. If you're reaching for Jesus, he's reaching for you. It's just the way he is. Amen. He cannot turn down faith. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She reached out and said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, boom. Amen. Her need was met. And that's just the kind of God we serve. It's not based on whether we deserve it, whether we're worthy of it. But when we reach out to him, he is going to respond. He's going to reach out to us. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We ask you to encourage our hearts, guide us in our journey, and help us, Lord, to help those around us, God, that do not know you but yet can through your word and through the Holy Ghost. And we pray for this in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. 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 What a good God that he would not forsake us if we're reaching for him. Psalms chapter 27, go just a few books farther along. Psalms 27 and verse 1. We're going to read through this. David hits some incredible points here to help us in our journey. Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What an incredible place to be. Amen. Amen. David knew that God was everything to him and that he had nothing to worry about. Verse 2, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. David is sharing a testimony for us to realize that when the enemy tries to approach us, when he tries to speak to us, when he tries to destroy us, we don't have to worry. God will destroy the enemy. Verse 3, though an host in, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. We don't have to fear fear. Amen. We don't have to fear the things that might come, the things that could come. Sammy was talking tonight about all oh, the certainty of uh, World War III and doom and gloom. And I said, man, I said, you're just a well of inspiration and encouragement, aren't you? <laughs> he says, yeah, well, what's going on in Ukraine? I said, there have been wars since the beginning of time. Yes. There have been wars. The Bible says in the last day there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. But don't let that trouble you. Amen. Amen. Don't let that fear override your day-to-day -day peace and comfort and confidence. Amen. Doesn't mean we can't be wise. Doesn't mean you can't put a little bit of food and water aside and be, be prepared for something bad to happen. But don't let it stop you from living. Don't let germs and bacteria and coronaviruses and everything else stop you from living. Fear. Amen. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to fear. It won't come near us. God will watch over us and protect us. And if he allows it to take us, we're going to heaven. 
we just get a short ticket. We just, we out of here. We'll let everybody else worry about it. But don't let fear and anxiety and all of that torment you. And one of the reasons you can feel confident is because David said, I love to be in the house of God. I love to hear the word of God. I love to worship God. I love to be in his presence. Amen. That was David's heartbeat. And when that's our heartbeat, then we don't have to worry about this big world. Amen. God's got that taken care of. He will watch out for us. Amen. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Amen. A place of protection. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. David knew in the house of the Lord. We come here, what? Our praises and our worship to him, it is a sacrifice. <coughs> Amen. I could be at home sleeping right now. I might not, but I could. Amen. But I'm in the house of the Lord. I've come here to worship him. I love to sing his praises. I love to be in fellowship with his people. Praise God. And because of this, we don't have to carry fear. We don't have to worry about the lies of the enemy. He says, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. David had this worry too. That God might forsake him, that God might. And he says, please don't do it. Amen. He prayed that God would. And the beauty of God is, is that he's not going to. Amen. If we want him, he wants us. Amen. He wants us. Praise God. And he wants to be close to us. He says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. So even though your life falls apart, it seems like everybody turns against you, he won't. Amen. Trust him. Lean on him. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. He speaks doubt. He speaks discouragement. He speaks failure. He digs up everything that he can possibly think of, even things that never happened. Well, what if you did this? Or what if that happened because of you? Or what if? Good Lord Almighty. <laughs> Amen. Your mind will be a whirr at 100,000 miles an hour, and you'll think, oh, I've sinned the impardonable sin, and you ain't done nothing. That's the work of the enemy. Amen. That's why the scripture does say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I'm here for me and to be a blessing, hopefully, to someone else. But I got to be here, whether you show up or not. <laughs> Amen. I was joking with the guy that runs the 7-Eleven last uh, Sunday. I went in there to get some coffee for my wife and I. And uh, he says, ah, oh, going to church this morning. And I says, yeah. I said, I got to. I'm the preacher. <laughs> Amen. And... Uh, I'm thankful. I'm glad to be a part of it. Amen. And, the, and whatever sacrifice there is in coming is offset by so much. Amen. Just to be in his presence, to just to be able to worship him, just to be able to tell him that we love him, setting this time aside to say, Jesus, I really do care about you. If you don't set time aside to pray, if you don't set time aside for the house of God, well, you're not really setting any time aside for God. So where's he at in all of that if you're not, you know? Amen. We should, I believe, spend time in his presence intentionally. And, and God knows, amen, and it's good for us when we do. He says, uh, verse 11, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would give up 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. David knew if you'll hold on to Jesus, Jesus will hold on to you. No matter what others say, no matter what the devil says, those little thoughts that come into your mind, and you're wondering, where did that come from? Amen. My wife shared the testimony about the young man that backslid, and he was all worried, all upset, and all concerned because of thoughts that had gone through his mind. And somebody told him, said, well, if you thought it, you've done it. No, you haven't. <laughs> Amen. I've had all kinds of garbage come into my mind, and I kick it out as quick as I can. You get out of here. I don't have time for you. Amen. It is not welcome in my house. As I said, you can't stop thoughts from coming into your head. Amen. But you can stop them from building a nest there. You can't keep a bird from flying over your head, but you can sure keep them from building a nest there. Yes. Amen. Or do like Brother Tim and just don't give no hair to build a nest there, right? <laughs> Amen. I'll fix that bird. They, they can't stay up there. No. Amen. God has plans for us. God has a purpose for us. God will watch over us. And the enemy wants so desperately to do us in. And that young man backslid because he thought he was guilty because he had had thoughts. Amen. Don't let thoughts overwhelm you. That's why Philippians 4 tells us whatsoever things are good, pure, lovely. If there's any praise, think on these things. Watch these things. Listen to these things. Don't fill your heart with garbage. Don't fill your mind with garbage, your life with garbage. My boss stopped by yesterday. We have several Hispanics in the shop, and they, boy, there's times, man, you think you're in Mexico. The music is going, and they are just juking, and they are just having a time. And I don't understand a word they're saying. <laughs> and uh, he asked me, he says, you know, are you all right with that? And I said, yeah, I'm fine with that. I said, I said, I don't know what they're saying, so it don't bother me at all. I love music. I don't have any problem with music. I said, he said, well, what kind of music do you listen to? I said, well, gospel. <laughs> yeah, that's basically all I listen to is gospel music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, but I don't like some of that rap music. I said, because they're so full of cussing and mm -hmm. all kinds of garbage and stuff. And I said, I, I don't want to hear it. Amen. Amen. But I said, as far as Hispanic cultural music, I'm, nah. if they're happy, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, if there's music going, I won't play mine. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it works. And they got music going all day, every day, whether it's in their earbuds or whether it's on their stereos. And they got some stereos now. Don't let me. They got some music. They can crank it up around that place. Amen. But I'm okay with it. Amen. It's not a threat to me. And uh, I don't have anything that I bring into my heart or into my life, though, that is negative, that's not good, that's not pure, that's not wholesome. Amen. I try to keep a mind right. And if the Holy Ghost starts talking to me about something, I'm like, eh, I didn't need that anyway. <laughs> it's gone. You're out of here. Because there's some things that I have started watching or got involved in. For instance, Sammy and I, we watched some of, uh, some. they had a cartoon series that was on uh, Kung Fu Panda. And it was all good. It was just kind of fun. And they was having all kinds of goofing, goofy things they was doing. And we went, it was a series thing, and so we were going through one little series after another, and it progressively started getting more, more occult and more demonic and more, and I says, that's it. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. Because yeah. it was all innocent and it was all fun up to a point, and then all of a sudden, I start noticing they're bringing in the devil. They're bringing in the cult. And Hollywood is packing that stuff into yes. everything they possibly can. How many can remember when Scooby-Doo was no ghosts, no gremlins, no demons, no witches, no, no. It was all people using that to scare other people. And they were uncovering the mystery. This guy was acting like a monster. This guy was acting like a ghost or, or not no more. No. They are flat out a cult. It's all about demons and spells and witches and people being possessed. Yes. And it was so innocent. It was so good. Yep. Philippians, what sort of things are good? What sort of things are pure? If there's any praise, if there's any virtue, think on these things. We have to be aware of this, church. Yes, amen. We have to watch what's being fed. 
Now, what I was used to with Scooby Doo was innocent and it was cool, you know, and but it ain't no more. And so parents are letting their kids watch Scooby Doo thinking, oh, it's just innocent. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. And man, they, they full blown demons. And all kinds of craziness. So, this is what the enemy tries to bring into our hearts and into our lives and into our minds. And if we keep all that stuff out the door, we don't let it come into our house. Guess what? Halloween's around the corner. Okay, it's a time where people are going to actually worship evil. They're going to celebrate evil. And, uh, and it's amazing that people in the church will celebrate Halloween. And think about that. <laughs> now, I understand, kind of like with the old Scooby-Doo. There was a time when it was fairly innocent. It didn't really mean anything. But it's getting evil. Yeah, tomorrow I go to the group and it says on the counter for, for tomorrow fun games and uh, uh, food and stuff. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they said uh, if you're going to dress up, you can dress up, but don't do it scary because it, it bothers people around there. Yeah. It really messes with their head. Yeah, they got enough stuff running around their heads. They don't right. need nothing else. Right. Yeah, yeah, amen. And we are in a world that is fascinated with evil. Okay? And what really scares me is when girls and women are fascinated with evil. I mean, guys are just kind of, we're kind of dumb, you know. We chase after any kind of anything that looks funny or exciting or we'll ride bulls. We'll do all kinds of dumb stuff. You wonder why we don't live long? Because we do dumb stuff. Ladies don't normally do that. But for ladies to be fascinated with zombies and Walking Dead and gruesome, macabre, horrible scenes and people dying horrible, violent deaths, there's something messed up. Amen. And that's what Halloween pivots around. And it is a huge day for witches. It's a huge day for the occult. That's their holiday. That's their Christmas, if you will. And, and yet there are many Christians who are inviting stuff into their homes not even thinking about it. Yes. Man, I've been doing Halloween trick or treat since I was... Well, you know, and there's the innocent side to it. But unfortunately, it's all pointing towards evil. That's what it's all built around. And so if we don't want to be forsaken, that means we just have to reach for him. Well, when I reach for him, I got to let go of some stuff behind me. And that's some of the stuff I let go of. Amen. I don't need that. And I don't particularly want somebody chasing me around with a chainsaw know how. That just is not a appetizing to me. I'm not interested. Amen. And yet there are people that think, oh, that's just so funny. It's not. No. Because there's a real side to that. Yes. And the real side to that is horrible horror. And it is incredible. And yet, all that stuff was around when I was a kid. So, I mean, it's it's not, it's just in your face now. Stuff that you had to get. I remember cartoon, uh, there were cartoon-like magazines, and they were all gruesome and gory stuff in them. I don't even know where they come from, or I don't even know where I saw them at, but I saw them as a kid. And, and I'm like, ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> Fascinating, you know. I'm just a dumb young mind. I'm like, oh, wow, is that what it looks like? You know, when that happens, that, that's the trouble with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're enticed by evil like we are good. Let a car wreck happen on the side of the road and people are going to be stopping and running at each other trying to see what horrible thing just happened. We cannot stop ourselves. And so we living for God need to take stock of the world we live in the lifestyle and the patterns and the habits that we get into, just like with the Elvis thing, you get, we get hung up on stuff and we don't need it. And it may not necessarily be bad, but it's not going to control me. I want Jesus to control me. Amen. I want Jesus to be large and in charge. He is my direction. Amen. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Chapter... 15, 2 Chronicles 15, and we're going to read beginning at verse 1. The Lord is speaking to Israel through the prophet. 
If you want to know where God's at on this, amen. This is what he says to the prophet. Chapter 15 of 2 Chronicles. And the spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa, which was the king, and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. You see how that works? He said, you reach for him, he's going to reach for you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Well, I don't want Jesus to forsake me. So that means that I have to be reaching for him. You have to be reaching for him. Our children have to be reaching for him. Amen. Our children are kept under us up to the age of accountability, but somewhere in that process, they got to start reaching. Yes. Amen. And I'm so thankful that our young people have started reaching for the Lord because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the way. <clears throat> he says, verse 3, Now for a long season Israel has been without the true God. In other words, they turned their back on God. They forsook God. And, uh, and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. You hear what he said? That's good. He said, Israel backslid, completely turned away from God, and their world started falling apart. And so they reached out for the Lord. And guess what he did? He was available. He was there. Amen. It's not that God wants to forsake us. And the enemy is trying so hard to get us to think that God just wants to get rid of us and he don't want to have to mess with us and deal with us. It's the other way around. God loves us. God cares about us. God wants us to do well. But if we choose to run from him, turn our backs on him, ignore him, then he's, okay, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Amen. Amen. But the moment we start reaching for him and we realize, ah, this is a bad idea. Lord, he's like, what, 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 what? Did you come? Amen. Isn't God awesome? Amen. I mean, think about it. Isn't God awesome? This is where they literally put him to the test and turned away from him and he had to forsake them. But the moment they turned back and called on him, he was there. He's a good God. Amen. Verse 5, in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries, and nation was destroyed of nation, city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Don't fail to reach out to God. Don't give up on God. God doesn't give up on us. We give up on us. And when we give up on us and we turn our backs on God and on his people and on his way and we go out into this, it starts tearing us to pieces. And we don't know why. And many times people have turned away from God and don't even realize they have. Amen. Because life envelops them and takes over. They get too busy. They're too busy to go to church. They're too busy to pray. Too busy to read their Bibles. And one month, one year, 10 years, it's like it all becomes a blur. And then one day they wake up and go, wow, I should be in church. How come I'm not where I belong? How come? Amen. And the moment we start reaching out to him, boom, he's there. He cares. And I, I am so thrilled to serve the Lord and to I need to know his word. That's what this is about tonight. If you know God's word, then you know he's not going to turn his back on you. Amen. Unless you rebel openly. And if you rebel openly and you reject him, then you can be rejected. But we don't want that to happen. Somebody say amen. 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 All right. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse... 55. Solomon, I believe, is praying a prayer.
talking to the Lord. Verse 55. That's 1 Kings 8 and 55. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he hath promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. That was his prayer. Amen. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these, my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he may maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times, as the matter shall require. That all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is none else. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to keep his statutes, to keep his commandments as at this day. God wants to bless us. Amen. And Solomon knew that we have to keep our hearts and our affections on him. But we also know that Solomon got distracted. He got distracted by wealth. He got distracted by women. And he drifted away from the ways of God. And as a result, Israel began to drift away from the ways of God. And then another king and another king. And after a while, Israel is no longer even serving God. Not even trying to serve God. As a matter of fact, they are worshiping false gods in the temple in Jerusalem. They forsook the Lord. They turned from God. And he turned from them. And that's what we read in Chronicles when the prophet spoke to Asa the king. You saw what happened. <laughs> Y'all turned from God and your world fell apart and the enemies came in and your, everything went terrible. But the moment that you turned back to God, he began to rectify and fix and straighten up and deliver and bless you. We serve an incredible God church. He is amazing. He is merciful. He is kind and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But that doesn't stop us from leaving and forsaking him. And so keep your heart right with God. That's why David said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it come the issues of life. Amen. And I have to keep my heart, and you have to keep your heart. And we can't allow evil in, and we try to make sure that only good comes out. Praise God. And the Lord has put us in a wonderful place. We have the Holy Ghost. We have God's angels watching over us. We are in a wonderful place in the family of God. We have, even though my biological parents are not here, amen, God has provided me with family. He's provided me with a home, a safe haven. The church is a place where we can find rest, where we can be loved, where we can be nourished. And God will minister to us. And no matter where we're at or what we come in with, even if nobody else knows, he knows exactly what you're going through, what you're dealing with, and he cares about it. And if you'll cast your cares on him, he's going to help. Praise the Lord. He will work all things out. And we are in a wonderful place. And so hold on to that. Cherish that. David said that, oh, I could dwell in the house of the Lord and be just a doorkeeper. Amen. All the days of my life. He said, that's, that's good enough for me. Praise the Lord. But I believe God's got more for us than just holding the door. Amen. I believe he's got some works we can do. And we're surrounded by people who need God so desperately. We're surrounded by people who are prodigals. There have been numerous revivals go through these communities here in Texas, and there are prodigals everywhere. And all we need is for the Holy Ghost to deal with us and with them, and God will open the door. And so pray that God will lead you to the hungry. Somebody out there wants to serve the Lord. Amen. There are many that won't, and we can't help that. But there are many that if they were approached or if we were led of God, they would turn their hearts over to the Lord. Let's pray right now and ask him for his guidance. Father, we thank you for your presence, for your guidance. Thank you for the anointing of the Lord that rests upon us, the favor of God. And Lord, I pray for your people, Lord, as you make us witnesses in this world, Jesus. 
Lord, thank you for comforting us in our word, in your word tonight, God, as we learn that you're not going to forsake us because we have stumbled or because the devil tries to fill our mind with lies. You're not going to leave us. You're not going to forsake us. As long as we're reaching out for you, you're going to be there, God. And so thank you for loving us so completely. And God, help us to trust you. And Lord, reach out to others and help them to find you as we have. And Lord, we praise you for this walk, this life, this church, your precious blood, and all your anointing, God. We give you praise in Jesus' name. The church said amen. 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 God bless you. We love you.